one of the biggest stories of the draft now, all offensive players, the six quarterbacks, but I think also the positional value aspect, something we've been pounding the table for a lot here, which is, all right, don't, don't just draft safeties and linebackers and running backs in the first round. I think it's weaker classes at those positions and also stronger classes at the more valuable positions, but we're seeing that. And now, even on defense, the two or three edge rushes that we like at the top, you know, the, the, the cornerbacks, uh, the two defensive uh, interior players. I mean, there's some really good players at good, important, valuable positions. I think that's the, the big story of this draft is every team's going to be pretty happy with, you know, the position and the fit and the player. Yep, yep, I agree. I think it's, 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 it's playing out to where a lot of these teams are very happy with how the night is going. So, and they're not having to get crazy, right? We talked about, okay, what, are there going to be eight trades tonight? They're not having to get crazy for this <laughs> kind of stuff. Is Dallas Turner the perfect fit for the Indianapolis Colts here at 15, given his athletic profile? I mean, if the Colts stay in this pick, I think they're loving life right now. Like, Dallas Turner's a great fit. I think Quinion Mitchell is a great fit for them as well. Byron Cooper, Murphy would Cooper, be a good fit A here. number of them, yeah. Cooper DeJean, I think, is a great pick for this team, right? Off coverage type of cover three corner, right? E for even right. even people who are skeptical about Cooper DeGene and his ability to play why, outside corner. I'm staring at right at you. I'm yeah, staring right at you. I'm staring right at you. You had to answer the radio calls for Cooper DeGene. So now, you get, him, now the, we get to have the, the conversation radio. about it. Um, I think that with Gus Bradley as that defensive coordinator there, I love it. He gets to play off cover three. He right. gets to manipulate that space. He gets to keep his eye on the quarterback. It's perfect. It's exactly what he did well at Iowa when he was having a lot of success and still learning those elite the, coverage the, the only problem with him is you don't know. You just don't know because he didn't play, you know, all the guys that in at some point we've seen the two Alabama guys up in the face of the best receivers in the country, mm -hmm. right, and just playing. You just didn't know about DeGene, DeGene. Dijon, 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 Dijon is how okay. he wants right. it said. DeGene just, is what I'm he used to call himself. I don't know what he calls himself now. but um, So that to me is the problem, is there, there's just a limited amount. He may end up being really good at all that stuff, but we haven't seen it on tape, and that makes me nervous. Sure. I feel like I've seen some some good man coverage reps, but not against the best receivers in the country. He just and generally not in bump and not in you know up in your right. face and you know you're right. He, there are so much more. There's so there are so many less reps with that. But I will say this too, it's the same thing with Quinion Mitchell, right? Quinion Mitchell, I think had I have questions about Quinion Mitchell too. I th he I didn't think, play anybody. I think Quinion had the like senior ball is thirty for, yeah, right. thirty reps in press out right. of four hundred yeah. as a corner, and so. I think that's another area where you have to just trust the athlete. Trust but you're also what he can you're be. also right that the Colts is the best landing spot for either of those two players specifically for that reason, yes. right? Yes. They're going to ask him to do less of that than any other team in the NFL. Yeah, and I, wonder I think what you it. called earlier, uh, teams trying to trade down here. I mean, if if the Colts are, we just mentioned four players would be great fits. They're like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll get them four or five picks later. Right. Somebody come One up, yeah, give me another third round or fourth yeah. rounder. Yeah. But this is uh, it's an interesting stretch here because I think there's a lot of good players available now, here. Here we've got something interesting. The Colts who covered athleticism Ooh, more than anything go. else have and instead gone for Laatu Latu, the edge from UCLA, whose main criticism, I guess, is he's not necessarily that elite edge. Enter PFF Gas, which says that actually on the field, using tracking data, Tell him. Latu is an elite level athlete. Go off. Boom. And by the way, in addition to being an elite level athlete on the field, he's a pass rushing savant when it comes to hand usage, variety of moves, ways to win. Phenomenal pick. 93.6 pass rush grade over the last two years. 23.4 pass rush win percentage. I mean, this dude has been phenomenal over the last two years when it has come to getting in the backfield. You see those numbers up right there. He was top 10 in quarterback hurries. He was third in sacks. Now this is just over the past two years. So the, or this, this is, I believe, just last year. So the numbers that I said were counting 2022 as well because it's a bigger sample size, right? Steve, you've taught me that all the time. Since I came to PFF, you told me, hey, anytime you can get a bigger sample size of data, it always means more because it'll tell you whether or not, okay, this guy really is able to showcase this ability or he is not so with Latu, we've got two years of phenomenal production from him and i think that uh, that's very clearly what the colts saw yeah and when you're when you're drafting edges it's uh it's athleticism plus production right you want both those things so as sam said you kind of ticked the athleticism box using some on-field game metrics you know coming from computer vision and the production's through the roof right i mean it really is 
comparable to the Aiden Hutchinson pick a couple years ago and comparable when you put it up against the Boses and Chase Young and all the best guys. So Latu is, as you described earlier this show too, Chris, just a good football player. Uses his hands, does everything well to produce on the football field, and that's what the Colts I mean, drafted. I, I mean, it's amazing. He's the first defensive player off the board. Yeah. I mean, you're saying now that he's better than the corners. You're saying that he's better than those D tackles, that he's better than the edges. That's, it's, it's a heck of a statement. I don't think that's crazy. But not just crazy, but uh, you know, Trav, you and I both called that. Back, hey, I, about ten minutes ago. That's not crazy at all. No, it's, it's, it's just the it's neck. Not. It's the neck. I think it's just the neck thing. I mean, yeah. when you yeah. have a guy that was told you can never play football again, but and that, then he transfers schools, and he's got ta- he's got production on the back end of that. I understand yeah. it, but and that was that. That's a heck of a. Now, now I, I will I will say this because obviously, like the neck thing, I think scared a lot of people with their evaluation. So. When he was at the Senior Bowl, I got the chance to just kind of like chat with him because he was sitting out that last day. He kind of like bumped his knee a little bit, so he didn't want to. He didn't want to. Um, he didn't want to stress it too much. So he's kind of standing around practice the day before. So I go up and I just introduce myself to him, and I was just chatting with him a little bit, and we were having the conversation. I was like, "Hey, you know, when you were in Washington, like, did you genuinely think that your career was done? Did you really?" Th-? And he's like, "No." I didn't. He's like, you know, I took a hit in practice, and obviously I felt something that was probably going to need some sort of surgery, like didn't feel good. But he's like, Washington's medical people kind of came up to him where they were like, hey, yeah, we're going to medically retire you. And he's like, whoa, what, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, it just doesn't look good, so we're going to medically retire you. And he said immediately after that, he was looking for surgeons who were going to perform the surgery on him so he, wow. he could keep playing football. So they, he finds a surgeon that they're very comfortable with. It ended up being UCLA's preferred surgeon so that made the transfer to UCLA and for getting him cleared to play very much easier and so it's like I I just I remember talking to him and he was he just said to me I never really thought my career was over like that all happened but I was immediately trying to find ways to be like okay yeah like I got a stinger but I I don't like feel terrible like he even said he was working out well not just that you know what he went to do but like between the retirement at Washington and playing football at UCA, at UCLA. You know what he was doing? Playing rugby. So he didn't <laughs> right, like take right. it easy. He, he was, didn't like he go was telling me that he was up. working out. Right. Yeah. He so. went to play another physical contact sport this time without pads. So I'm not too worried about him. I'm really not. I just think he's a fantastic passer. It is the one thing that historically the PFF data has been spot on generally yeah. is picking edge players particularly right? guys in that rare air and you mentioned you know some players earlier to to put into context where he is his pass rushing profile is better than Aiden Hutchinson's was coming out it's better than Will Anderson's was coming out and those guys have become pro bowl fringe all pro type of players he's closer to the Boses and the Miles Garrett's than he was those two guys so like the, the data has not missed on many of those guys. And I do feel we started off saying that the neck injury was likely a binary thing for NFL teams, right? You were either saying it's cool. He's obviously, it's not a problem. He's just played two elite seasons. We don't care, right? Whoever the, the guy at Washington was, he overreacted or he's gotten past it, whatever. It's not a problem. Or you were saying, we're not touching that. There's something there. It's neck injury. We're not messing with that at all. He's off the board. So it felt like you, it probably wouldn't affect his draft stock too much because enough teams wouldn't care. And it was only recently there was sort of rumblings of, uh, well, maybe it's a degenerative thing. Maybe it will shorten his career. Maybe it will be a problem long term. But I think the Colts obviously do not or don't think it's going to be a problem. And at that point, they are putting their money on one of the best pass rushing profiles we've seen come into the league.